Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you another exciting game played between Stockfish and Lila Chess Zero. This game is from Top Chess Engine Championship Season 18 Super Final. We are in round 13 and Lila Chess Zero which had white pieces opened up with e4 2 which Stockfish answered with g6. Modern defense is on the board. Uh, bishop c4, knight f6, queen e2, knight c6 and e5, white is choosing a very sharp line which involves a queen sacrifice. Yeah, once you are choosing this line with e5, after knight takes d4, you are forced to follow the variation and sacrifice your queen, otherwise then d takes e5 can follow and that's almost losing, that's why we see e takes f6 and I have to tell you that this is a well-known line earlier we have already seen this variation in a game played by Bent Larsen against Svetlana Bo in case you missed that game the link I will pin in the comment section and now in this game let's see what's going to happen next a bishop h6 king f8 in Larsen's game we saw rook g8 but this time Stockfish decided to offer the rook which strangely Lila Chess 0 didn't even touch and in this game we are not going to see a capture and that's probably because the engines considered this bishop stronger than the rook. Yeah very strange guys uh, bishop d7 although black could pretty much play rook g8 as well and save the rook but yeah in this game as mentioned above we are not going to see an exchange a3 f6 so black is acquiring a waiting strategy is uh, finally only on move 21 black decided to move the rook and gradually is consolidating the position but honestly i really don't like this type of a pawn push it's somehow weakening the position Lila's positional understanding is of course better and seems like that it's in here that this king g8 uh, is allowing white to gain advantage. Yeah, probably you have already guessed that this h6 was a provocative move. If you win it then rook h7 can follow and then for example rook takes h4. That's why white played rook e2 and instead of a move like for example king h7 which could keep these pawns stronger we have king g8 and after king g8 actually we see a huge change in evaluation and now gradually white is starting to gain advantage and yeah and that's due to the attacking chance you know there we have it white is starting a ferocious attack h5 trying to break into pieces black's defensive shield open up the king side and target black king Still, uh, if I'm not mistaken, up to this point, Black didn't even make a move with this queen, right? And meanwhile, white minor pieces are getting very active and are starting to create problems for Black. The G file is open, and uh, also this I really like this knight on f5, the bishop, and all this, of course gives white a huge compensation. At this point, when you're going to lose this rook, that's why. Black decided to uh, play rook takes g7 and still not touch this pawn on g7 because it's a defensive shield. Uh, of course, uh, you have a pawn on uh, you have a passed pawn on h2, but realizing it going for a pawn promotion seems impossible. The h1 square is successfully guarded, and meanwhile, white is uh, intensifying the pressure. After queen f3 we see a very interesting bishop takes h2 move, white is sacrificing the knight. Rook f1, queen takes f1. Now, the idea of giving up, of sacrificing the knight was that now for example if queen c5 then e takes f5 can follow and there is no way to stop white's aggression. These pawns are really very strong, the rooks are good, the bishops as well and yeah in this case there is no way to survive. That's why Stockfish decided to give up the queen and go for an end game where it has two pawns against the bishop, but, but of course that's not enough, you know. Strangely at this point Stockfish also decided to uh, give up the pawn on a7, something which uh, I think that in mm, a human game was not possible, you know. I don't think that any 
uh, Grandmaster would allow Bishop takes a7. Uh, okay, let's see what's going to happen next. So white is stopping any c5 moves and meanwhile uh, Lila is also giving up the a pawn. Yeah, this see, this is strange guys. This is strange and um, in some cases explaining why this happens. Why are they throwing away their pawns as if they are nothing? It's difficult. Bishop h3 yeah, let's go for bishop h3 and e3 rook check. So black also gave up the e pawn, right? All this is very strange and already, yeah, victory is just a matter of moves. And at this point on move 66, uh, white won by, by adjudication. This is a top chess engine rule and the, the judges stopped the game. The rest is very easy, even for humans and of course for engines, realizing an, advan an advantage in these type of positions is just a matter of time and electricity. So this is it, dear chess lovers. This was an interesting game. We saw an early queen sacrifice on move 7 and then with a very nice peace play and an attack, Lila chess 0 prevailed over brute force stockfish feel free to share this game with your friends as well and in the end let's also solve a simple chess puzzle where the task is to win with the white pieces as usual we'll wait for your answer in the comment section thanks for watching we'll see you in my next video